My name is Odelia McFadden, and I am a Work Ready alumni. I am so excited to be here with all of you this morning. It is great to see all of you guys here. I really appreciate all of you being here. As you can see from, this, from that video, we certainly have a lot to be proud of today. I became a part of Work Ready Philadelphia, of the Work Ready Philadelphia family during my freshman year at Alany High School in 2004, working at St. Christopher's Hospital for Children in the health tech program. During my four years in the program, I worked in a neonatal intensive care unit, short procedure unit, special care and burn unit, and adolescent medicine. My experience working in the adolescent medicine department and talking to teens that were pregnant or HIV positive was the motivation behind my decision to pursue a career in psychology. I believe that the experiences I've gained through my participation in Work Ready through the health tech program combined with my strong academic record are what allowed me to acquire a full scholarship to Rosemont College where I earned a Bachelor's of Arts in Psychology in two and a half years. I also earned a Master of Arts in Professional Counseling Psychology and Addictions Counseling as I have in addition counseling. My strive for excellence has not ended there. I have also earned a post-master certificate in military and veterans behavioral health from Weiner University in conjunction with the Center of Deployment Psychology. And is currently in my third year of doctoral studies at Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine studying clinical psychology or my strive to become a psychologist with the hope of one day working with our service members. I, excuse me. Thanks to all of you who have made connections with the, that made connections and investment that enable me to succeed. But enough about me. We are here to celebrate all of you and the accomplishments that you all have contributed to our youth over the past year. First, we are coming off the hills of another successful program year in which nearly 10,000 youth benefited from work experience with with our region's most successful businesses. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Second, we, support, we surpassed early projections and reached some record-breaking accomplishment, all by working in partnership with one another. During the 2014 Breakfast of Work Ready Champions, we are going to acknowledge the, the event theme, connect, invest, achieve by highlighting the significant investments that make this work possible, as well as celebrate the collaboration and achievement all of, our, of all of our Work Ready partners. Next, we'll hear from our keynote speaker, Mayor Michael Nutter, who will provide remarks on our city's success this year and how we can work together in the coming year to provide more opportunities for our youth. Then we will break for breakfast and allow for networking. Following breakfast, we will begin the awards portion of the program with two special presenters joining us today, including Shakima Fallmore Townsend, President and CEO of the Philadelphia Youth Network, and Jared Shelley, digital producer of the Philadelphia Business Journal. Each of these presenters will each of these speakers will pre uh, present awards being distributed this year, including the Connect Award, the Investment Award, and the Achievement Award. As I mentioned earlier, I participated in Work Ready nearly 10 years ago. Uh, Work Ready was launched in 2003 and throughout the last 11 years has successfully developed a systemic approach to career-connected education one that has developed a notable reputation and been replicated elsewhere. It is an honor to have been a part of this great initiative and even more exciting that the success continues to grow. This success would not be possible without the collaboration, the collaborative efforts of the committed partners that make up the Work Ready community, which is all of you guys. With the support of these partners, Work Ready, has become an inspiration to organizations on a national level. In fact, just this morning, our Executive Vice President, Stephanie Gambone, who I know all of you guys know, she is participating on a panel discussion with representatives from the Department of Labor down in DC. 
where Work Ready Philadelphia is being recognized as a best practice. I think we ought to give the Work Ready family a round of applause. Collectively, each of you in this room all have invested your energy, expertise, and resources in one of the most critical components to assuring our city's economic success, our young people. I can tell you as a recipient of these efforts, each of the young people served through Work Ready are grateful of your work, your resources, and your mentorship. So let's, let's our, let our program get underway. It is my privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Mayor Michael Nutter. Ladies and gentlemen, please recognize one of the most accomplished young ladies in our city. And uh, Shakima Fulmore Townsend, uh, our president and CEO of the Philadelphia Youth Network. Um, I think, so we're, we're cool now, right? Shakima, we're, we're Right. Okay. Uh, no more, you know, Shakira and Shatama and all that. I had a week of lessons uh, on. Uh, no, Kim and I are uh, we're cool. Um, Mark Edwards, uh, President and CEO of Philadelphia Works. Thank you, Pat Iding, President and CEO, of course, of the Philadelphia Council and AFL-CIO. Mark Gale. Great to CEO of Philly International Airport, John McNichol, President and CEO of the Philadelphia, I'm sorry, the Pennsylvania Convention Center, Dr. Donald Generals, President of Philadelphia Community College, Craig Adams, President and CEO of PICO, Joe Casey, General Manager of SEPTA, Dr. Laura Shore, of course, Chief Education Officer for uh, the Mayor's Office of Education, Vanessa Garrett Harley, uh, DHS Commissioner. Mari Porter, Chief Grants Officer for the City of Philadelphia, and certainly our partners, the School District, uh, the Philadelphia Department of Human Services, Department of Parks and Recreation, and all of you uh, here today. I want to say thank you very, very much. Um, I understand that SRC Commissioner Sylvia Sims uh, is here with us uh, this morning. I want to thank her and certainly Dr. Height and all the team over at the School District and the SRC. Charmaine Matlock-Turner, of course, representing UAC. Uh, and so do me a favor, give all those folks a huge round of applause. <laughs> and so uh, today, so I have an absolute excuse uh, to, uh, to do this. Um, my wife is here. Um, she generally does not like me to uh, just kind of recognize her uh, in these uh, circumstances. You know, Lisa's very focused on her work. But as I came in, Lori's, uh, one of Lori's uh, staffers, Sithi, uh, 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 was giving me an update. You know, because when I come in, you know, you get to tell the mayor what's going on, who's in the room, who's here, you got to know all the things, and she's walking through all these people here, and, you know, and you have to recognize your wife. <laughs> and I said, well, I just saw her a half hour ago. <laughs> we were at home <laughs> together. But, ladies and gentlemen, the president of Philadelphia Academies, Lisa Nutter, please recognize her. tell about that later on today, but anyway, that's the way it goes. Um, you, of course, are attending the Work Ready Breakfast of Champions, uh, and uh, it is an honor to uh, have an opportunity to spend a little bit of time with you, uh, but it really is a pleasure to work with all of you throughout uh, the course of the year, not just on summer jobs, uh, but uh, certainly uh, in many instances year-round employment. I had asked, but now I see from the podium, I believe that that is Councilman Mark Squilla uh, in the back. Uh, Mark and uh, Councilman Squilla and I actually go to the same barbershop, so uh, we have, uh, we have a, a recognition piece there. Um, please recognize the First District Councilman, Councilman Mark Squilla. And if I miss any other elected officials who are here, uh, let us uh, please express our appreciation uh, to, uh, to them as well. I'm kind of scanning the audience, uh, but I think Councilman School might be the only one. But for our elected officials, please thank them uh, for their great efforts. I'm going to talk about them uh, in a second. Um, each year, of course, the Philadelphia Youth Network brings together, brings us all together to celebrate the contributions of local businesses, nonprofits, corporate investors, and the philanthropic community, and many individuals who support work-ready programs all year long. 
The first, of course, the most important folks in the room are the young people who participate in work ready programs. These young people choose to spend their time improving their own skills, learning new things, and of course building their resumes for the future. They're paving their own pathway to success. And so I want to ask that we give them a big round of applause. For this. <laughs> now, of course, they would not have these great opportunities to work in city government, the private sector, higher education, uh, without the great, great support that we get from so many who invest in our young people. Their employers, their private internships uh, that they get, and also uh, many just donate uh, to work ready, even if they're not able to uh, take on uh, some of our young people themselves. I want to commend all of you for your commitment to cultivating your own homegrown talent and workforce by providing thousands and thousands of paid summer and year-round work experiences uh, to our city's young people. This is one of the best investments you're ever going to make. The returns are measurable and at another level they're truly immeasurable. You're investing in a better future for them, but you're also investing in our own local economy and our great city. Today I'm proud to share with all of you that thanks to your dedicated support to Work Ready, we were able to serve 8,195 young people in jobs this past summer. So that's right, nearly 8,200 young people participated in and benefited from Work Ready summer programming this past summer. That includes 900 young people in north central Philadelphia. This is the area uh, that also takes in the 22nd Police District, which unfortunately uh, has over decades uh, been one of our most challenged uh, areas of the city uh, in terms of violence and violent crime. More than half, more than half of north central's population is under the age of 24. Our administration and I firmly believe that if we can connect these young people to meaningful work experiences during the course of the summer and uh, to a greater extent throughout the course of the year, that they'll be less likely to engage in negative activity and either become a victim uh, or a perpetrator of crime. Work opportunities are in fact a key component to our own youth violence reduction strategy and we've benefited directly from funding by the Patricia Kind Foundation, uh, Family Foundation. And I want to ask that we recognize Christina Kind and Laura Kind McKenna. <laughs> Did you think I was not going to do that? <laughs> you know me better than that. The Samuel S. Fells Fund and the Lincoln Financial Foundation. Let us please recognize them as well. Because of your commitment, we were actually able to provide more Work Ready Summer Experiences in the summer of 2014 than we were in the summer of 2013, and actually now more than doubled our initial projections for the summer of 2014 by more than 4,000 work experiences. And Work Ready served more youth across all of its various programs, summer and year-round, in 2014. A total of 9,953 young people, both in school and out of school. In order to provide these invaluable opportunities to Philadelphia youth, we rallied support locally and nationally and from both public and private sectors. With the support of Philadelphia City Council and the Department of Human Services, the City of Philadelphia was able to invest more than seven million dollars, the largest contribution of its kind ever in the city's history, including 3.6 million dollars from the Department of Human Services to create enhanced summer and year-round youth work opportunities. Our historic investment, <laughs> I was hoping. Our historic investment was met by local and national businesses and the philanthropic community by setting a record of their own, creating 1,960 summer work experiences, the most that this sector has provided so far. I know for a fact that these investments will pay future dividends for our city. Studies show that early work experience, particularly paid opportunities, improve academic performance, increase future earning potential, and also wage growth, as well as improve overall employment rates. There are incredible benefits to the city. We gain highly skilled, well-educated, highly motivated individuals who want to work and better understand the world of work 
and position these young people for early success. You talk about uh, young people like Adelia, uh, our MC and the workforce alumna. History, her story shows us that when young people are prepared to take those next steps, they are highly motivated to achieve and that all they really need is support and direction and care. Success will in fact happen. And that's what WorkReady does. It's already one of the reasons, it's uh, one of the reasons that WorkReady has become, as was mentioned earlier, and uh, if I cannot believe, and it's only of course under these circumstances, because every event that I've ever been to involving WorkReady, you know that Stephanie uh, is uh, at those events. But uh, she, likes a few of us, has really not yet figured out how to be in two places at one time. And so she's excused from this one if she's presenting best practices at the Department of Labor uh, in Washington. But it is, in fact, uh, becoming a national model. And people are coming and calling Philadelphia to see what we're doing here. We should all be proud of that. Our goal as a city is to grow work ready. We still have much more work to do. But it's also an effort to create other avenues for young people to gain skills and experience that will prepare them for the workforce and then on to higher education. Through PowerCore PHL and Philly Future Track programs, we're connecting young people who are not currently employed or enrolled in post-secondary training programs with six months long apprenticeship opportunities in our departments of streets, water, and parks and recreation. These young people are learning on the job, getting paid, and helping to complete projects all across Philadelphia. We had the opportunity, I'm going to talk about the My Brother's Keeper initiative, but we had the opportunity to hear from one of those young men just yesterday, Juan Jeffries, who told his story. He had previously been incarcerated. He's now in an apprentice job at the Philadelphia Water Department and doing well. We also offer internships, the Mayor's Internship Program. We host both high school and college age students and assign them to departments all across the city government where they work on real projects and again get a better understanding of government. Through programs like the Graduation Coach Campaign, which empowers caring adults and helps a young person through in their life to help them graduate from high school and then hopefully then go over to the Philly Goes to College program, which helps that same young person learn about the college process, how to pay for it, and we're seeing more and more Philadelphians now going to college, but also graduating. I love that our matriculation rates are growing up, going up, but the most important thing in that is that our graduation rates go up as well. We've also created a science, technology, engineering, and math, of course, STEM uh, mentorship program called US 2020 PHL. Philadelphia is one of seven cities across the United States of America that participates in the US 2020 program. We're matching young people with STEM professionals who will then hopefully spark their interest to innovative 21st century careers. Part of our strategy also requires that we acknowledge that not every young person uh, may in fact have the same opportunities to succeed, and in particular young men and boys of color. And as I mentioned yesterday, we hosted a My Brother's Keeper uh, meeting. Secretary Anthony Fox was the Secretary of Transportation was the lead speaker on behalf of President Barack Obama. I serve as a co-chair of the My Brother's Keeper Initiative for the U.S. Conference of Mayors with Mayor William Bell from Birmingham, Alabama. We must focus on what's going on with our young men and boys of color through early childhood, up through college, and get them prepared for careers, hopefully in many of your organizations for you assembled here today. The event itself was a huge success, and the folks who came up from Washington, D.C. were tremendously uh, proud of the work being done here in Philadelphia, and again, are encouraging folks to contact us here in the city. I've sent out the message throughout the entire city government, and there were many, many uh, department heads and commissioners at the event yesterday. The My Brother's Keeper initiative for me is an all-hands-on-deck. Every department and agency in our city government has a role to play in focusing in on particular challenges that young men and boys, young men and boys of color uh, face uh, not only in this city but across uh, many, many cities uh, in America. Issues of incarceration, lack of educational opportunity, health care uh, disparities, and many challenges uh, toward employment and certainly for some who may be returning citizens uh, to truly come back into civil society. For those who weren't there, uh, and I know many of the room were, and I thank you for your presence. Secretary Fox and I encourage our young people of color to share their stories, but I want to encourage you to share your stories 
your life story, your engagement, your successes and your failures, and then that you came back to then be a successful person. Our young people need to hear that not everyone started off completely successful in their lives. They've had their own ups and downs and challenges in life, overcame them, and are now doing great things. Every one of you can have an impact on a young person in this city just by telling your own personal story. Again, I want to thank all of you for your commitment, your dedication, and your work. And as you already know, WorkReady receives more than twice as many applications for its programs than we have opportunities available. And so as excited as I am about the numbers from this past summer, we have so much, much more work to do. We also need to better connect with many of our companies and employers, some of whom run their own programs. And so in many instances, it's certainly clear that more than you know, 8,200 young people had summer work opportunities. We need to collect better data in that regard. There are, though, some fundamental challenges and problems. We have young people who want to work, but we don't have yet enough slots for them. So I'm now issuing a citywide call to action to invest in our young people. Give our young people a chance. Give them a job, a real job, a real true summer experience, a training opportunity, an engagement with a serious adult who's going to spend some time with them and talk with them about what the world of work is about. Again, remember, some of these young people are 15, 16, 17 years old. And as much fun as they're having and as much as they're thinking about a whole host of other things, the reality for them is that they're actually going to be, at least chronologically, an adult in another three, four, five years. Their world and their life is going to change pretty dramatically when they get into their 20s and come to the realization that I can't do many of the things I used to do when I was 13, 14, 15. I have to figure out how to take care of myself. What is my future? Where am I going? And if they don't have a sense of a pathway forward and a sense of hope, young people who don't think they're going to make it through their 20s make a whole set of different decisions than virtually any of us in this room were probably thinking about. I was never wondering whether I was going to get it through my 20s. I never remember a moment where there was a question as to whether I was going to college or not. Now, we didn't know how we were going to pay for it, but there was no question that as 8th grade comes after 7th grade, as 10th grade comes after ninth grade, there was no question that after 12th grade I was going to college and we were going to figure this out. Well, something happened along the way. Somewhere in, the, in my analysis of all this, somewhere in the 70s and 80s, something happened about this need to go for higher education. Much like many other young people, I can, you know, first in the family to go to college and Virtually everybody on my block went to college. This is the late 60s, early 70s, uh, mid 70s. We have to re-inspire young people and their parents, and their parents, to understand the billions of dollars that are available for young people to go to college. And yes, it's tremendously expensive, and there's a piece on the radio this morning about uh, tuition, debt, and all of those kinds of issues. But you just can't make it in this 21st century without higher education. It's just not possible. You will be so marginalized. You will be so left on the curb, on the side of the road. It's just hard. It's just hard. And so this idea of going to further your education, and college may not be the best place for every young person, but lifelong learning is two-year, four-year, some uh, training program. You have to do something. And so parents have to remind their kids, I mean, you're just not going to be sitting around the house here. You're going to do something. So you have to continue to grow. You have to continue to learn. This world is changing so rapidly. And you know, they're so technologically savvy. I mean, the disconnect between understanding this thing I have in my pocket I usually carry my back pocket and sit on and then crack the glass. Not me, that's what the young people do. And they can text faster than anybody, they can connect with anything, understanding the power of that device in their hands to learn more, to get more information, to be connected to the internet. That is the greatest tool of access that's been created in the last 50 years. 50, 60 years ago, folks were fighting for the opportunity to sit at a lunch counter, get a job, move into a particular neighborhood. 
And no, we haven't solved all of those problems, but things are certainly better than they were. But now the great challenge to access is about literacy, financial literacy, numeracy, STEM uh, opportunities, and knowing what the world of work is really all about. It is the only thing that is now holding this city back from the greatness that we can achieve. Our level of poverty, the level of education, those factors are all tied to each other and certainly public safety goes with it because young people who are working, folks who can take care of themselves, people who can see a future for themselves are not involved in all that madness out in the streets. They're all inextricably tied together. The well-educated workforce lifts up this city, lifts up our economy, more employers will want to be here, it can lower your taxes and make sure that people are working and not engaged in negative activities. This is not rocket science. This is not even science. Much of this is really just kind of common sense and a focus and a dedication and a commitment. I would not be standing here but for a family of folks, not just my personal family, but a family of people wrapping their arms around a young kid out of West Philadelphia and saying, I'm going to help you out. Every step along the way. But 20 years ago, Right after I had run for city council for the first time, in 1987, my car had died, I lost the race, had no job. Went back to the job where I was working before in the financial services industry. When I was in college, I had one of the, you know those, I'm not trying to give them an ad, but it's the best way to describe it. You know the Deer Park water jugs? I had one of those when I was in college, and you know, every day, you know, you got the change in your pocket. I'm putting change in the thing, and yeah, I thought it was kind of interesting. It was, it was like, it was kind of like a fad at the time. People did those things. You know, we did a lot of crazy things in the '70s and '80s. And it was about half filled. And I moved a couple times. And I'm lugging this thing around. I'm taking it from place to place. In 1988, after that election and going back to work, and I had to take my security license test all over again because my license had lapsed because I'd been away from the industry for a while. In 1988, I was turning that water jug upside down every day to get quarters so that I could get on SEPTA and go to work. And 20 years later, on January 7, 2008, I stood on the stage of the Academy of Music to take my first oath of office is the mayor of my hometown. That's the power of people working with you. It's the power of having a good education. It's the power of having a community support you every step along the way. And if a kid from 55th and Larchwood could do that and be in a different place 20 years later, there's no reason that a kid from North Philly, West Philly, Northeast, Northwest, the River Wards, or Center City can't do the same thing. We know how to educate kids. We know what they need. We as adults have an obligation every day to do everything we possibly can to support them, to give them the same opportunities that many of us in this room have had all along our lives as well. That's what work ready is about. That's what being a good citizen is about. That's what supporting young people can do for this entire city and this country. Thank you.